And we asked our good friend, Julia Shapiro, who in the world would be best suited to give a lecture on innovation in IR. He immediately said, Professor Sobiati. We are really looking forward to this lecture and hope to learn a lot from his career of innovation and education in the field of IR and patients. Welcome, Dr. Sobiati. Thank you. Thank you for this introduction. I'm, I'm honored. It's a great honor for me to have been given this opportunity to give this talk to the uh, African world, particularly. I was in my life several times in, in Egypt for scientific reasons and in a few other African countries. Uh, but I am enthusiastic to, uh, to share my experience with all of you. Uh, just briefly, just two or three slides regarding my history, which has al already been anticipated by, by you, Dr. Kundo. Um, my, the, the very first uh, ablation in the world uh, was performed by my group, by myself and my group in 1982, uh, and it was the injection of ethanol into a large parathyroid mass, which could not be operated for several clinical reasons. And this uh, procedure opened the world of uh, interventional oncology. And, and the first paper published, ever published in the literature regarding the treatment, the percutaneous treatment of, of solid tumors was this one in radiology, 1985, on the treatment of a parathyroid glands in the hyperparathyroid asthma. Uh, following my experience, uh, Dr. Vivraghi, one of my best friends, started uh, one year later to inject ethanol into a photocellular carcinomas. And then, at that time, we moved together in the world of interventional oncology. Uh, in June 1995, together with Professor Goldberg, uh, Nahum Goldberg, now, now working in uh, Jerusalem, uh, we performed the first cool-tip radiofrequency ablation of HCC worldwide in my hospital. And uh, uh, in, I'm, I'm very, very proud to say that in June uh, 2006, uh, we opened the, officially the world of interventional oncology with the very first World Conference on Interventional Oncology organized by me in on the Como. So this was the official start of this new uh, pillar of, uh, uh, of uh, oncologic. Now, uh, let, let me start with this simple, uh, apparently simple case. This was a, uh, a patient sent to us with this new uh, lesion here, uh, hi um, hypervascular on CT, just adjacent to a previous uh, treatment here, a, a previous ablation. It seemed to be apparently easy looking at CT, but when we moved to the conventional ultrasound guidance, we, we usually use sonography in the CT room sometimes, but sonography is the most important modality. We had this pattern. The lesion was completely invisible, but also the liver was partly invisible. Uh, due to the location of this uh, uh, and the, the, the um, obesity of this patient. We could have used the CT to approach this lesion, but this would have mean to uh, cross the lung. And we don't like to cross the lung to reach liver lesions. So we decided to use one of the modalities I will, uh, I will present in my talk. You will see later uh, how this uh, case will be uh, performed. I will briefly introduce innovations on the fields of application of interventional oncology, innovations on the ablative modalities, innovations of, uh, on image guidance modalities, innovations on modalities for the assessment of results, and finally, some perspectives on unexpected results of interventional, unexpected and positive results of interventional oncology. So let me start with the, uh, this slide which describes the evolution from the nine, early 90s to today of these, uh, uh, these technology and these clinical results. I will only uh, treat uh, local treatments, uh, ablations. I will not treat for a problem of time uh, the embolic devices, chemotherapy and radioembolization because 
they would take too long time for my talk. Um, uh, let me say that uh, we moved initially from liver, as you know, then we moved to other organs. Nowadays, uh, some treatments in some organs uh, have been accepted worldwide, and some of them are included in official guidelines. For example, the treatments of hepatocellular carcinomas, the treatment of liver metastasis, uh, the treatment of kidney cancers, of lung tumors on bone tumors. But there are some other fields, very interesting, which are growing. Uh, and then, sorry, head and neck, breast, pancreas, prostate, adrenal glands, and many others. Let me just uh, briefly comment on the thyroid, because uh, in my opinion, this will be one of the fields in which uh, in the next uh, five years, uh, interventional oncology will become more and more important. We started, we started years ago with the treatment uh, with ablation, uh, or laser or radio frequency, nowadays also microwaves of uh, um, benign symptomatic nodules it means large goiters for several reasons. For example, for patients who did not want to be operated or for patients in some, uh, in some critical uh, general conditions with important symptoms due to the size of the mass. And uh, day by day, month by month, the results came out from different centers in the world um, probably mostly in, uh, in Europe than in other countries, but they are really enthusiastic results. This is a benign disease. We do not need to destroy entirely the, the mass. We just to have to destroy most of the, of, the, uh, of the mass to achieve a good clinical result. And you see here that the mean volume reduction at 12 months is approximately 80%. So, uh, and uh, it, it is paralleled also by a very, very, very minor number of complications, extremely rare, well, less than 1% of complications, and most of them are minor complications. So I feel that this field of thyroid benign uh, lesions uh, um, will be uh, one of the, the next uh, um, important step for the near future. Uh, in, the, in, in parallel with that, uh, we started to treat also micro cancers of the thyroid gland, papillary thyroid micro cancers. Uh, micro means officially means uh, less than one centimeter, but um, day by day, uh, case by case, we are expanding the size, and we feel now that uh, either using radio frequency or laser or microwaves, we can great results in this field, avoiding to this patient thyroidectomies. Remember that these patients are very often young guys uh, in which uh, the thyroidectomy will be a severe damage for the entire life. Uh, this is a typical example of a small papillary carcinoma in the right lobe of the thyroid gland, adequate treatment, and two years later, there is no evidence of a residual tumor. Of course, this can be done when there are no, uh, no nodal adenopathies in the neck, when the lesion is unique. But, but nowadays, there is also the possibility to, to ablate nodal metastasis after surgery or after ablation of the primary cancer on time in order, again, to reduce the possibility of surgical resection. So, in conclusion, thyroid benign lesions and uh, thyroid micropapillary carcinomas are two very interesting fields of application of interventional oncology for the next uh, years. You see again here a case, complete disappearance in 67% of the cases and the marked decrease with calcified residual in 33%. So excellent results in a large group of cases uh, Going back now, discussing the possibilities, uh, the, uh, the different modalities for, for ablations, uh, you know that uh, RFA was the first after ethanol, uh, and uh, it is currently uh, day by day more, more frequently replaced by microwaves. Why? 
because microwaves uh, can offer the possibility to achieve large, larger and faster necrotic areas. Um, the uh, can, can allow to ablate the lesions so close to larger vessels, which is a very difficult field for RFA usually, uh, can uh, achieve homogeneous coagulation necrosis and uh, necrosis with very clear cut margins. These are the reasons why the most important is probably the possibility to ablate lesions close to large blood vessels, uh, also given the possibility to achieve uh, higher temperatures compared to radio frequency. Uh, which can pass through the blood vessel and treat the opposite part of the blood vessel. Uh, this cannot be done usually with radio frequency. This is one of the reasons why microwave is uh, nowadays, at least in liver, more frequently used than RFA. And one of the possibilities of ablation is to treat time by time, um, let's say year by year, different new lesions in the same patient. In this case, this patient was operated probably seven times for new metastatic lesions coming out and showed by imaging modalities. This is an example of microwaves. You see that the blood vessels, blood vessels remain completely patent in the middle of a large necrotic area. The same in this case, necrotic area uh, goes through the blood vessel and allows to achieve a very large necrotic area. This is another possibility for microwaves to ablate lesions recurring, locally recurring after chemoembolization. This lesion was chemoembolized. Here there is a new area and the microwaves allows easily to uh, treat this area. Don't forget that we have now newer modalities. For example, irreversible electroporation. Irreversible electroporation, which is a little bit more complex to be used for some reasons, can allow, for example, to treat safely lesions which are extremely adjacent to, for example, blood uh, bile ducts, like in this case. This lesion would be very difficult to ablate with radio frequency or with microwaves due to this, uh, lo its location with uh, IRE can be treated safely. The same for pancreatic lesions. Pancreas usually is not suitable for RFA, is not suitable for microwaves for several reasons. Um, probably the currently one of the best modalities to treat pancreatic lesions when needed is IRE, elect irreversible electroporation. This is a case of a treatment performed. Uh, also in other areas, for example, in the ablation of perirectal uh, lesions. In this case, you can use both laser with very thin fibers uh, and uh, IRE sometimes. So there are se several possibilities also for that. Uh, remember that we can, we have introduced in the last uh, five to seven to 10 years, modalities to optimize the results. One of the most important is this one, is the hydrodissection. Hydrodissections mean the production of fluid, uh, usually a physiologic solution all around the lesion to be treated in order to create a space, a separation between the lesion and dangerous structures, uh, several possibilities. Remember that we can use uh, this more easily with microwaves because the microwaves can tolerate the presence of uh, cell ion solution, which, which cannot be used with the radio frequency because a cell ion solution can conduct the current uh, pro caused by radio frequency. And so this can cause some damages. So hydrodissection is ideal particularly for microwave ablations. Another possibility is to combine nowadays uh, occlusion of blood vessels, um, of course, temporary occlusion of blood vessels, which are adjacent to large lesions to be treated. This can combine a double effect. Uh, you can also embolize, embolize vessels supplying lesions 
uh, hypervascular lesions usually, like hepatocellular carcinomas, and then ablate what remains after chemoembolization. But I would like to spend a few minutes now to describe to you what I feel will be one of the most important, if not the most important modality for the next years. This modality is still under development, is still uh, on course on uh, uh, tr trials. One of the most important trials will start in Europe in the next two or three months in connection with some American centers. And it's called the histotripsy. I don't know if any of you knows what is histotripsy. It's a type of, it's a type of treatment which does, it is absolutely not invasive. It does not enter the body. Nothing enters our body. It's non-thermal and it's non-ionizing. How does it work? It works in this way. This is a machine. This is the, the head of the machine where the uh, the uh, energy is produced and also where the ultrasound probe is included, as you can see here. And uh, uh, during the, the treatment, you see the, 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 the arm can move up and down uh, towards the target to be treated. What is the principle of uh, histotripsy? The principle is totally different from the so-called HIFU, high frequency ultrasound, which was on the way to be developed in, in past years, but was not so successful. Um, histotripsy is again based on high, fo high, fo high intensity focused ultrasound, but with short, high amplitude micro pulses. The duty cycle is usually one to 100. This causes the total lack of heating. Uh, the effect is the cavitation at the focal point where it is concentrated. Uh, these pulses create a high pressure into the tissue being treated, creating a bubble cloud. These bubbles are, pull, are pulled out from the tissue by the strong negative pressure. They collapse and it breaks with complete cellular destruction. So the, the effect is a mechanical energy, not a thermal energy. And the bubble cloud is visualized in real time during the treatment. And uh, we, can, we can see that the lesion becomes uh, gradually uh, hypochoic during the ablation itself. Uh, this can be uh, delivered through also and around critical structures one of the most important points of histotripsy. This is the result of the treatment. You can see that only some fibers remain viable, usually the collagen fibers of the tissue, while all the neoplastic tissue disappears. Again, the, the, the organ treated, the lesion treated becomes a sort of a hole with some parts, some thin layers of collagen tissue, which are the only parts of the tissue which remain viable. And another important point is that the delimitation between the treated area and the intact uh, structure is absolutely clear, uh, very, very, very uh, uh, evident, without any inflammatory reaction all around. So there is no thermal gradient, it is very precise, and there is no inflammation around. Inflammation can sometimes be negative in some applications for radio frequency or microwaves. Uh, Histotripsy has, has another important point. It can re it reabsorbs very quickly uh, after the, the treatment. You can see that a lesion, large lesion treated immediately post ablation, uh, only four weeks after ablation, almost completely disappears which is not, does not occur with radio frequency, does not occur with microwaves. Another example of a immediate post-ablation and four weeks post-ablation in which we have this dramatic shrinkage of the um, re residual tumor, the residual lesion, sorry, uh, almost composed by collagen and no viable tumor remaining inside. 
there is also no heat seek effect. Uh, the same effect uh, we, we can have with microwaves. You can see here the treatment adjacent to a portal vein, and the portal vein remains absolutely intact. There is a clear delinea delimitation between the area of ablation and the wall of the portal vein. Well, what is probably even more surprising is the possibility that sparing all the tissues which contain collagen, for example, the walls of the bile ducts, you can treat easy, easily areas which contain bile ducts without damaging the bile duct. Uh, I just like to show you this case in which you see that the bile duct is absolutely patent in the middle a large necrotic area. Uh, this result is unique for this, for this technology, cannot be achieved with any other ablation modality. We know that when we have to ablate lesions too close to large bile ducts, common bile duct, hepatic duct, and that, we are very scared and we try to be as far as possible from the bile duct because of the lesions, possibility to, to cause lesions. Once more, um, we have a possibility to ablate also lesions adjacent to the, to the intestinal wall. The lesion is ablated while the intestinal wall is absolutely safe without any kind of damage. This is an example of a lesion of an hepatocellular carcinoma in uh, of one of the lesions uh, of a multifocal hepatocellular carcinoma, pre-treatment MRI, one day post, large ablation area, one week post, uh, well, well demarcated, no evidence of recurrence, eight weeks almost disappearing, becoming smaller and smaller. Uh, this lesion usually disappears completely within two months after the treatment. So a much shorter time compared to all the other modalities. And simultaneously, you have a dramatic decrease of alpha fetoprotein. Now, let's move from the modalities for ablation to the effects of thermal ablation. We know that the effect of thermal ablations are several. Temperature rise, microvascular coagulation, dehydration, uh, shrinking of the lesion, vaporization, formation of bubbles. Uh, my interest at this point uh, is regarding microvascular coagulation, which can be easily uh, showed and uh, um, put in evidence using during the procedure uh, guided by sonography, contrasting hands, ultrasound. I don't know if any of you has experience with contrasting hands sonography, which is a very simple uh, examination, low cost examination. But in some cases, it can be particularly useful. For example, here we have a case of a lesion, which should be approximate in this area, but ultrasound does not show the lesion. Uh, on uh, contrasting hand sonography, we can visualize the lesion exactly. So when we start the procedure, we repeat the injection. And when we are in the best condition of visualization of the, of the lesion, we can insert our needle, this is a microwave antenna, to ablate the tumor. Uh, contrast of sonography was fundamental to visualize the tumor. Is contrast of the sun sufficient for the very first assessment of treatment response? I would say yes, cannot be the final assessment, but it is important. Example, in this case, hepatocellular carcinoma before treatment, hypervascular in arterial phase. Uh, the treatment should, seems to be completed, but we inject in contrast, uh, contrast ultrasound. We use, uh, in generally, Sonoview uh, produced by Bracco Italian Company. And we see that our, there is a residual portion of the lesion still viable. So we cannot stop the treatment at this time we should reintroduce our uh, electrode or our antenna and ablate also this area. In this case, we start from a, a relatively small metastasis and CUS shows a very large volume of necrosis. This is absolutely sufficient. We can close the procedure 
at that point, while in this case, the lesion before, the lesion immediately after treatment, after the first uh, ablation, we thought it was enough, but when we re-injected, we, we injected contrast uh, ultrasound, uh, we injected our contrast agent, we saw that the volume of necrosis achieved was extremely similar, if not equal, to the volume of the lesion before ablation. This cannot be accepted. We will talk in a moment about the great importance of the ablative margins. So we understood immediately that the procedure could not be stopped here. We reintroduced our uh, antenna and we enlarged significantly the volume of necrosis. At that point, the procedure was considered finished and we moved to a final CT assessment. Another important use of uh, uh, ultrasound contrast agents is when you are treating lesions in delicate areas. This, this is an hepatocellular carcinoma just against the wall, the anterior wall of the gallbladder, a delicate position. Uh, you see that uh, during the treatment, you can stop the treatment, inject uh, uh, cont contrast agent and see that there is a margin, a clear margin between the gallbladder and the necrotic area. And also that this margin is not hypervascular. Thus, it's not a, a problem of cholecystitis caused by the treatment. So we can stop the treatment here and perform the, the CT control, which confirms exactly the volume of necrosis and no damages to the gallbladder wall. Finally, with contrast ultrasound, we can also detect sometimes possible complications early. In a, in a very early phase, this was a treatment which seemed to be very simple, even if in a delicate patient with severe coagulation problems. This is the volume of necrosis during the treatment. This was the lesion before the treatment. But at a certain point, we noticed something strange. We noticed some fluid here. And we noticed, noticed in this area the presence of a hyperechoic material floating inside the, the, flu, the, 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 the fluid here around the liver. This was the blood uh, ex, um, coming out from the target and entering the peritoneal space. So we decided to stop immediately the treatment here, and we decided to perform a contrast enhanced convincity, which confirmed exactly the important bleeding. So we, of course, we did not continue the treatment. We moved to embolization. We embolized the area and following TAE, we found that the, the, the fluid was stopped here and gradually was reabsorbed. Let's open now a very important topic. I don't know, again, uh, if any of you has experience on that, but this is something which has really changed our way of operating, our way of treating patients. It is fusion imaging. Fusion imaging, as you know, is the model possibility to, to correlate two imaging modalities, two on, or more imaging modalities different in the same procedure altogether. Um, in, um, it was used in the past for static procedures, for example, PET-CT is a typical example, while it was more difficult to, um, to, re to perform a fusion imaging for moving modalities, it means real-time sonography. So this is a case of uh, fusion imaging of uh, real-time sonography with CT acquired before, but uh, precisely, precisely co-registered with sonography. Uh, as you can see here, the co-registration can be absolutely perfect. Um, you, can, uh, you can notice, you can see all the details of the liver structure, and you can also overlap uh, the, um, the CT over sonography to see if the co-registration is perfect. And again, as you can see here, the co-registration is up. Good. When we started this uh, fusion imaging procedure many years ago, almost 20 years ago, uh, we started because we were sometimes 
uh, searching for lesions clearly visible on CT, like this uh, tiny metastasis here, but invisible for sonography. And treating this area under CT guidance, uh, CT guidance would not be so easy. So we decided to start this, uh, uh, this uh, principle of fusion imaging uh, using an electromagnetic field generator and sensors applied to the ultrasound probe and possibly also to the handle of the needle to be used in, in one single machine, one single uh, ultrasound machine with the so-called image fusion module. After some uh, experiments, some tests during years, we found at the, at the end a very simple modality to co-register uh, the uh, reference modality, CT or MRI or PET, to ultrasound. The modality is a so-called one plane and one point. We started trying to, to scroll the uh, CT image introduced, inserted into the ultrasound machine until we find the uh, umbilical plane and the umbilicus, very well shown here. At this point, we freeze the CT image. Then we can activate the ultrasound portion of the screen and move the ultrasound probe on patient's abdomen perfectly perpendicular to the body surface, of course, in axial scans, searching for the same umbilicus. At that point, we have one plane, the same transumbilical plane on CT and on sonography. Of course, this has to be done in the same phase of respiration of the patient. Then we need one point. And the best, uh, the, the, the smaller the point is, the better it is. Usually we uh, try to find vascular vessel bifurcations, which are very tiny points, very well recognizable. In this case, for example, we started finding the, the main portal bifurcation, the separation between the right and left branch of the portal vein here on CT, and we found it and marked. Then we moving the ultrasound probe, we found the same position here uh, on ultrasound and pushing the button of acquire, this is the final result, perfect co-registration of ultrasound and CT. If there are minimal, uh, minimal variations, minimal changes, we can, using the fine tuning regulation, try to uh, perform a perfect adaptation. Uh, when we use also external sensors, and not only the one applied to the, to the ultrasound probe, we can apply, for example, the sensor to the hub of the ablation device. This, this is a, a, a microwave antenna with a hub applied here. This allows to obtain this fascinating visualization of the needle in two different ways, in real-time ultrasound and also on the pre-recorded CT image here. Uh, so that if, for example, in, during some procedures, you miss the visibility of the needle on the real, in real-time ultrasound because of possible problems, you can always uh, uh, have your reference on this uh, acquired image in which you see the needle centering perfect, perfectly the target. I said that we can fuse ultrasound with nowadays with all, with all the imaging modalities existing. This is an example of a fusion of real-time sonography with PET. This lesion was clearly visible on PET in the liver with many previous treatments, uh, intravascular treatments and ablative treatments, so that the visualization of this lesion was particularly difficult, if not impossible. Also, contrast enhanced sonography did not help us. So we used the CT portion of PET CT to uh, co-register with sonography, in this case, sonography with contrast, enhance with contrast enhancement, then we split on the PET image, which shows exactly the lesion where it, where it is. And we direct our, our needle to the area where we see 
the area, the, the, trip, the area um, uh, uptaking FDG uh, on PET. This is the treatment. And this is the result with the complete disappearance, uh, complete necrosis of the viable uh, tumor seen on PET previously. In more complicated cases, we can also use the injection of contrast, iodine, iodinated contrast agent before performing the PET CT in order to have contrast enhanced CT fused with PET, with PET and we fuse the result with sonography. In this other case, this patient was treated many times. He had a new lesion here very well visible with PET, poorly visible with all the other modalities, and it is, was, was correctly targeted here precisely uh, using this modality. So we moved from this only remaining lesion to zero lesions in this liver. The same result, the similar result, can be achieved in, in few places in the, in the world, also using very expensive interventional PET CT rooms. Of course, the difference in cost between a system of uh, ultrasound fusion and an interventional PET CT room is dramatic. So uh, all the places which cannot afford buying an interventional PET CT room, which are most of the rooms in the world, interventional rooms in the world, are suggested to try to use uh, this modality much much uh, less expensive. Uh, using particular systems like the so-called Omnitrax, this plastic system which has to be applied on the skin of the patient before acquiring the CT, uh, the pre-treatment uh, CT, we can very easily uh, register uh, ultrasound with CT, with MRI and with PET. In this case, it was a, 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 the, the, the fusion of four different modalities, ultrasound, MRI, uh, CT, and PET, all together. Of course, the main limitation of this image fusion modality can be the possibility of the uh, respiration of the patient. But using the so-called breathing control algorithm, with the sensor applied to the skin of the patient, which shows us the respiratory phases of the patient, we can find the exact timing of the co-registration and pushing the button, we can see moving in real time, both the real time ultrasound, the real real time procedure, and also the MRI procedure, which was taken before, which of course is not in real time, but moves exactly in the same moment as you can see here. Why fusion, image, fusion imaging for ablation? For many different uh, indications. The most important is lesions not seen at all on sonography, uh, better seen on CT, PET, or MRI, or local tumor progressions after resections, ablations, lesions only seen in the very short arterial phase on CT, and many other possible indications. Let me show you just two cases. One is this, an hepatocellular carcinoma located on, to, on the, in the dome of the liver, just in the middle of the lungs, of the lung, difficult to ablate, particularly difficult, impossible to find for sonography, but fusion uh, helped us to identify where was the lesion and to treat this tumor, non crossing, not crossing the lung, simply crossing the peritoneum and entering directly into the liver, like you, you see here, with an excellent result without any complication. Uh, this is the case I showed at the, at the very beginning. Uh, this was the lesion. Uh, how can, you, can, can we move here? We tried to use fusion. And uh, this was the registration, which is the identification of the lesion here. And Fusion was particularly difficult because the visibility for ultrasound was extremely poor. But we had the reference here. Having checked before that the, the one plane, one point registration was good, we trusted mostly on the CT part of the, of the, of the screen 
we entered with our antenna here to treat this tumor here. And finally, this was the excellent result before and after, before and after. Complete treatment without any complication in this uh, very delicate patient. In the years, we treated lots of cases with fusion imaging. You see here the numbers. Uh, and uh, the complications related to the guidance method were, were zero, not even one. Uh, so excellent results. And we published a paper years ago <clears throat> in the, selecting a group of 295 cases in which the lesions were not absolutely visualized with sonography or just poorly visualized. You see lesions uh, treated with US, US CT fusion or US MRI fusion with different ablative techniques in, in all the different liver, liver segments. And the final result was this, correct targeting in more than 95% of the cases. This result justifies our long experience with this system. And as you can see here, nowadays there are papers like this one, which collect, review uh, uh, the literature regarding image fusion for the guidance of ablations. And if you can scroll and analyze all these numbers, these numbers are not very different from the ones we have achieved in our personal experience. Also, it is important to notice that the use of image fusion is particularly interesting for junior operators, in which the procedure shortens the needle place and time significantly and reduces the number of needle pullbacks needed to, to, for, for, re, for redirection, regardless of operator experience. So it is extremely important. It, it is useful for seniors operators but even more important for junior operators, as you can see. Uh, is uh, image fusion usable only for liver? Not at all, can be used for almost for every organ of our body. I'd like to show you just one example, curious example of this 17 year old boy with an osteoid osteoma of the thigh here, very high, just adjacent to the testis of the patient. So we did not want to give to this patient so much of radiation because as you know, to treat osteoid osteomas with radiofrequency, the most complicated portion of the treatment is not the treatment, is the localization of the tumor, the, the correct insertion of the lesion of the antenna or of a, a RFA electrode. So we decided to use this system to try to identify the osteoid osteoma with ultrasound. And as you can see here, we were able to localize the, the bone and the cortex. Overlapping precisely, we could see that there was a perfect co-registration. So the osteoid osteoma was in this position, of course visualized only on CD, not visible on ultrasound, but we knew exactly where it was located. When we were relatively sure about the localization, we performed only one CT scan, just a few seconds. We found that the, the, uh, the targeting was perfect and we ablated this tumor. So the possibility of image fusion is extremely important. In the, mm, mm, uh, another topic to be discussed, very important is the ablative margins. Ablative margins are of crucial importance for the um, definition of our results. Um, you can see here that when the liberty margins is, margin is between five and 10 millimeters, the LTP rate is 15%. When it is larger than 10 millimeters, it goes down to 5%. This is a study of the Sloan Kettering group from Dr. Sophocleus. But is it so easy to achieve ability margins? Not at all because uh, first of all, lesions are not always regular in their margins, but probably more important, the volume of necrosis are not always regular, are not always rounded, and they have to be exactly targeted on the lesion to, to, ha to have good results. We can use contrast enhanced sonography in real time 
to see if the lesion is projected over the uh, area of ablation exactly in the center. So we can have an preliminary idea of the ablative margin, but this is not enough. This is just a preliminary evaluation. For years, for many years, surgeons have been correctly claiming that the most significant difference between surgery and thermal ablation was the modality of assessment of the success because they used to send the specimens to the pathology for the histologic evaluation of the resection margins, while we usually were used to put our images, CT or MRI, side by side onto different screens using our fax systems and with our eyes just seeing if the, the margins were achieved or not. Is this volume of necrosis enough for this lesion? Is it correctly, uh, correctly centered? We don't know exactly. So we need something more. In, uh, in Innsbruck, in uh, December 2019, we uh, had uh, 38 radiologists, 18 with long experience, 20 with little experience in ablations. We showed all of them nine hepatocellular carcinomas in nine patients with known outcomes, asking them if the uh, analysis of this side-by-side -side juxtaposition could provide the exact, uh, exact uh, um, definition of the treatment, technical success or not technical success. Um, at, <laughs> as many as 44% of the cases per radiologist were misjudged without any significant difference between experienced and unexperienced radiologists. The conclusion was it is absolutely mandatory used ablation confirmation software. And nowadays we strongly, strongly suggest that every person in the world performing uh, ablation treatments uh, of the liver, but also of other organs, uh, should use an ablation confirmation software uh, able to, uh, to delineate automatically the margins of all the organs, in this case of the liver, the, the major blood vessels, the tumors automatically, and the volumes of necrosis, almost all again automatically. Then showing them in 3D before and after treatment, with all the data regarding the volumes of the organs, the volumes of the lesions. Then uh, the uh, system automatically, totally automatically, without any personal uh, intervention by the, um, the radiologist, can overlap non-rigidly in order to account for liver displacement and deformations during respiration. Um, so overlapping uh, non-rigidly pre and post uh, ablation CT scans, for example, in order to uh, visualize if the margins are achieved and are homogeneous all around the volume of the tumor. You can also fix uh, uh, what kind of ablative margin you like to analyze. For example, in this case, it was five millimeter. And you see in green here, the ablative margin in the middle between the necrotic volume in blue and the, the real tumor in orange. Finally, the system can show you in 2D and in, in 3D the registration result, I highlighting possible residual unablated portion of the tumor and of ablative margins. In this case, there is absolutely no viable tumor out of the, necro out of the necrosis. And also the, the ability margin is almost entirely included into the, ne the necrotic area. This is particularly important. And in our opinion, this kind of software should be capable to register also, also all the follow-up CT MRI scans of the patient, comparing them with the pre and the initial post ablation scans and should, should be a standalone software. An example of a case in a lesion treated here, this is before treatment. This is the volume of necrosis calculated by the software. You see that the volume is entirely inside the necrotic area. And finally, the 3D volume shows that the treatment is absolutely complete. 
In this other case, we were confident regarding the large volume of necrosis achieved compared to the size of the metastasis here, but the, the software shows that a portion of the lesion seems to be out, confirmed by the 3D volume where you see some green area out of the necrotic volume in blue. This was confirmed also by the accurate analysis. And in fact, one year later, exactly where we saw uh, the, uh, the area or the marginal area untreated with the software, there was a recurrence of the tumor. The, uh, all these uh, this concepts have been underlined also by the Austin group of Professor Bale um, in this interesting, very interesting paper recently published in European Radiology. They conclude that uh, ablation question software should be mandatory for every thermal ablation procedure in order to achieve the so-called ablation 2.0 precision, enough margins, and this is the road to A0 compared to the R0 of surgical resection. Even more important, when you have to perform stereotactic radiofrequency ablations for large lesions like this, and this is a, a modality which is extremely successful. In this other interesting paper on the same group of Innsbruck, you see that in these livers sent for transplantation, so analyze this analyzed histologically after treatment, the complete pathological response was achieved in 97.3% of the livers in a great, great group. Even better, if you complete after performing the ablation with biopsies of the ablation margins, and in order to have also a histologic confirmation that there is no viable tumor all around. Let me conclude with just a few, few words regarding the, uh, the modalities uh, for the new modalities for guidance of these treatments. Oh, you know that now we have excellent systems of NGOCT, unfortunately very expensive. They are very important, but also very expensive. We may have simpler systems like this one, which can allow the operator to guide the procedure, not introducing his hands uh, in the, under the CT uh, gantry in order to take, uh, to avoid to get um, a lot of radiation. Um, we may have also um, steerable robots like this one, which can adapt and can also correct automatically possible misalignments of the needle towards the target, but these are still on the way to be experimented, to be tested clinically. We have tested, on the contrary, a system of augmented reality. Augmented reality is the precise superimposition of virtual objects over real world imagery in order to supplement native sensory inputs. In this case, you can use uh, uh, augmented reality without the interventional procedures just to overlap the real anatomy of the patient and the anatomy achieved with CT or MRI before in order to control, for example, the position of blood vessels in real time. We have tested and developed a system, probably the very first system in the world of intervention of uh, augmented reality for the direct guidance of interventional procedures. It is a very simple system based on smart glasses with cameras, a simple laptop uh, with uh, uh, sensors with no repetitive pattern fixed to the handle of the device, sensors applied to the skin of the patient before starting the treatment in order to visualize and recognize on CT. And then all these elements can be recognized by the operator using the smart glasses. Here, this is a case in which the lesion is located here in green. This is what the operator sees on the, on the smart glasses. When he hits the target, the target changes the color, becomes red. It means that it has been completely destroyed, killed. And this is the result. Another case here, and we, we have this tiny metastasis here, not seen with sonography at all. The preparation of the patient is always the same. 
we can see the, tar the, the sensors uh, in, in uh, augmented reality, the liver in red, the bones, uh, the major blood vessels of the liver, and also the target here in green. Uh, the system gives you automatically the line which connects the electronic line, which connects the tip of the needle to the target. It is simply important to follow that line in order to precisely hit the target in, their, in its center with the precision which is between two and three millimeters. This is a system, a very low cost system, which can, in my opinion, in the next years, uh, diffuse and becomes more and more popular, especially um, for, for young users with not experienced users, because it's, it's really a low cost device. Usability both in ultrasound room and CT room for every organ with any biopsy needle, high speed and great precision. Finally, unexpected result. We know that interventional oncology can simulate or inhibit immune responses. It was occasional. Sometimes in the, in the literature, we found cases in which treating a lesion, for example, a lesion in the liver, like the case here, uh, in, the, in the kidney, like the case here, also the lung metastasis disappeared unexpectedly. It is the so-called abscopal effect. Now we know that particularly using the system of histotripsy, which I showed you before, you can uh, achieve this uh, result in very frequently and also unexpectedly much more often than usually. A case of a lesion, a multifocal HCC, we, uh, they treated one lesion and also the other photocellular carcinomas non-treated, not ablated, remained exactly the same on time, weeks post. In this case, a lesion with multiple metastases, they decided to ablate only two lesions for this kind of test, one and two. But on time, all the metastases of this patient gradually decreased in size and became less and less vascularized. This has to be confirmed. This has to be studied in many different studies, but this is an important point to remember. So we, we know that the potential benefits of image guided ablation are the direct tumor residual effect, the minimal systemic effects, less invasiveness compared to surgery, lower costs, and applicability to non-surgical candidates. But at what point we are? In the first 30 years, ablation was put on the map, being accepted as a cancer treatment modality. We feel that in the next 20 years, ablation will be integrated into the cancer treatment paradigm, thanks to improved tools, new clinical niches, better biological understanding, and much, much more importantly, hopeful enthusiasm and willingness of doing and experimenting of new generations. Uh, I hope that all of you are in this group of young operators, possibly even greater than ours in the past 20, 30 years. I hope so. I hope this for the future of interventional oncologies, interventional oncology which started from me and from other, other colleagues, now old colleagues, but we hope that the new generation will be even more active than we were in the past. Think about how far you have come today and how much farther you will go tomorrow. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Professor Sobiati. This, this was really interesting. I mean, you can listen to this over and over. I have a few questions that uh, I would want to ask. Meanwhile, uh, whoever has questions can feel free to post them or uh, you can actually uh, put on your microphone and ask uh, the question. I'll, I'll go ahead with a few questions. Uh, I'll start with the histotripsy technique that is that you said clearly that is still under study and not yet in practice. If I saw it well, I, I couldn't really understand how you precisely target a lesion using this technique. 
because you get your result, you can get your results on the technique, but it seems like the ultrasound waves just go through every, through the whole organ and not precisely into the lesion. So how does it selectively target the lesion? Thank you for your question. Um, the, the system is extremely accurate. We tested it on animals and also in some patients. Uh, the, the, the preparation of the patient is crucial because before starting uh, giving energy, uh, the system, the, the you have to demarcate exactly the, the margins of the lesion. You have to define exactly the margins you like to achieve, the ablative margins you like to achieve. Uh, also analyzing the respir respiratory movements of the patient in order that during the entire respiration of the patient, the volume of uh, uh, you need to achieve remains inside the treatment. When you are absolutely confident with that, it means five, 10 minutes of preparation, you simply push your pedal and the machine works automatically. You have, you have only to control on the ultrasound screen that the system works and that's it. It is, uh, it, it is much simpler than you can expect. And are there any limitations in terms of the depth? Like if you go deeper, does it become less accurate or what's like the ideal depth? Yeah, uh, so far the system allows uh, to, um, to uh, reach confidently 14 centimeters from the skin, which is not 100% uh, enough. Um, we, we, we love saying that uh, in America would be too, not, not enough at all because yeah, the, uh, the frequent yeah. in American countries in North America, man, it's just, just a joke. Um, but, but 14 centimeters, if you find the right approach, uh, lateral, uh, part, oblique and so on, can be enough in most cases. So uh, they, they say that in the next years, they will, uh, uh, they will go much farther but so far, it is the, this is the limitation. Um, I'm, I'm, in my idea, this is a system which will have an incredible future uh, because it is absolutely non-invasive and uh, extremely, extremely precise. It's, it's just at the very beginning, but uh, uh, this will, will not be for me because of my age. I am uh, almost 69 today. <laughs> Uh, but for the next generations, uh, this will be extremely interesting. And it seems so, like it uh, will also be very cost efficient, right? Because there's no no reusable, uh, it, it's all reusable. Like you, you don't have any disposable parts. Absolutely. Uh, the cost of the system is low and there, has, there are no reusable. Uh, everything, sorry, everything is reusable. Uh, you have no... Uh, no um, materials to be used in a, in a single patient. So uh, yeah. it's extremely convenient. So um, talking about the new emerging techniques of ablation, like uh, um, uh, this one, the uh, hist histotripsy, electroporation, the microwave and what, what do you think about the future of RFA? Do you think this will at some point phase out uh, in your experience? Uh, now, this is a very, a very critical question. Um, in the history of medicine, it is difficult to find um, procedures which uh, disappeared completely. Um, uh, ma many systems we used in the past have been, uh, have been uh, reduced in terms of use, not completely disappeared. I feel that radio frequency at this time, at this point, for, for ablations, for example, of thyroid lesions will be used for many years more because for, for thyroid, it is extremely efficient, very fast, and also with very thin needles. Uh, so the, the, also the, the trauma to the patient is really very, very limited. And it works much faster than laser, for example. For abdominal organs, in my opinion, the main advantage so far of radio frequency is that uh, the electrodes cost cost less than microwave antennas, uh, about uh, about 50%. And in uh, in centers where 
they produce many cases, uh, this can be an advantage. So in my opinion, uh, at this time, centers which we have, that have a good activity, an important activity, can choose, can select case by case, uh, if you use a radio frequency, for lesions uh, not so large, for lesions uh, far from blood vessels and so on, and microwaves in all the other cases, for example, um, before the possible advent of histotripsy and other, other possible modalities. But uh, mm, probably RFA will never disappear completely, in my opinion. Um, okay. Ivan, can I ask another question? Yes, yes, please. Uh, so I had a question about um, image fusion and also the augmented reality applications that you discussed. And, you know, one of the perceived uh, hurdles is uh, the extra time to set it up, right? Can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, how long you think it takes for a department to implement the technology to a point that you don't, don't use any extra time? Um, and um, and also, do you use this or do you recommend using this for all cases, like also the simple cases in order to become quicker and better with the setup? Or do you only use it for uh, difficult cases? Good point. Um, first of all, uh, we, we say that in, in our opinion, uh, augmented reality, when it will be diffused, uh, will be a system to democratize uh, ablations. Uh, it means uh, to uh, diffuse ablations, particularly among young users. Uh, let me just uh, uh, um, mention an example. Uh, we were in front of our first uh, patient uh, two years ago at Humanitas, and there was a very young resident who had never performed even one biopsy in his life at that time. He was just close to us. During the procedure, I said, uh, um, uh, do you like to, to try? And he said, me, uh, can you explain to me how it works? And uh, two engineers explained to him in five minutes, five minutes, uh, how to use the system. He took the needle in his hands and he reached the, ta the target, uh, difficult target, uh, and very, uh, very deep in the liver in this exactly the same time I needed to reach the target after 30 years of experience. This was amazing, uh, unbelievable. Uh, and we repeated the experience for the second patient and it was the same. So, uh, because it is based on electronics and you, you know, uh, my generation, <laughs> As, as I said, I am almost almost 69. Uh, we were not used to, to employ electronics for our, our everyday activity. Young people work every day with cell phones, with uh, every electronic system. They learn in, in, in minutes or seconds how to use them, first of all. Second point is that uh, since the very beginning, we understood that if you use uh, adequately the system, the preparation of the patient is, uh, takes uh, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, you, if, you, uh, if you can work with ultrasound uh, or in a, in, a, in a CT room, you can leave the patient in the CT room, uh, or take a, a contrast intensity with the sensors applied to the skin, which is different from routine CT scans, and then move dire directly to the software prepare the software, 10 minutes approximately, and then take the, 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 the needle in your hands. Uh, from the beginning to the procedure, let's say 20, 25, 30 minutes maximum, which is, which is a reasonable time, absolutely. If you do not work in the CT room, you can only work in the ultrasound room, and we also tested that, it is important that after achieving the CT scan with the sensor on the skin, you can, you should accurately uh, and cautiously take the patient from the CT room to the ultrasound room, asking the patient to move, uh, not to move at all possibly, so that the sensor remain applied correctly to the skin where, the, where you put them, and then you start the procedure. This takes, uh, for probably 20, 25, 30 minutes more, of course. 
the ideal situation for augmented reality, in my opinion, is to use it in the city rooms without using CT for the procedure, only CT for at the end of the procedure. So you save radiation to the patient, or radiation also to the operators, which is also more important, and the time is almost the same. Very, very fascinating. All right, uh, my last question is probably a more basic one, given that um, most of our audience are, uh, are people who probably are not using these techniques, like the basic techniques, radiofrequency ablation, um, microwave ablation, and uh, who probably don't have even access to the high tech imaging techniques. So um, in case of, let's say, microwave or um, uh, radiofrequency ablation, you're going to ablate a tumor, you don't have all of these high tech um, techniques for volumetric assessment. How do you, for example, estimate your uh, ablative margins or necrotic margins before a procedure? Yeah, uh, another, another very good question, right? Thank you. Um, we, we say that, and I fully agree, that one of the major limitations of ablations uh, as we performed for, for years and years and years is the uh, accuracy of the registration, uh, of the, sorry, of the, uh, the assessment of results. Uh, in order to have a software like the one I showed you, um, you have to probably uh, to, to spend uh, uh, what I would say 10, 20,000 uh, uh, euros. One software used for every case, o only one software once, once upon a time. So uh, it's not a, a, an important cost. Um, and if you can use it for every, every case, possibly, possibly, as soon as possible, after the procedure, the ideal would be immediately when the patient is still lying in front of you on the table. Because if you, if you, if you understand that the lesion was not completely uh, largely treated, you can reablate immediately, avoiding to recall the patient for a second treatment, which is something that every patient does not like so much, uh, as, you can, uh, as you can understand. Um, but um, I think that this kind of software should be uh, in the near future diffused almost everywhere, it's especially in centers with a good uh, activity. Um, I, I had too many things to say today, so I tried to limit. Um, there are software nowadays which are included into uh, ability machines but they work only with that ablative machine. If you have a radio frequency system, a, a microwave system, a laser system, you need three different software, for example. So it, it becomes more costly. The ideal is to have external software, standalone software, which can adapt to every, every kind of procedure. You spend your, your money once and you get the result finally. Uh, this is uh, something, uh, and it's not so expensive. Really, it's not too expensive. It's less than half of the cost of a radio frequency machine, usually. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I th think we don't have any more questions coming in. I would really thank you. Before we probably call it. Uh, a group picture and I will ask everyone who is participating to put on their videos if possible so that we can take a group picture and maybe we can uh, if so that we take a Fabian will help us take a, a good um, picture. Yeah. yeah thank you again so much this was really uh, really fascinating um, very fascinating lecture. Uh, would you mind um, stop sharing your screen? Then we can have everyone on the on the picture together here. Or let me, or actually, let me try. Like, we can also maybe do like a side by side here. How can, how can I do? I have to stop the. Uh, I, I think I think I figured out a good way here. 
Let me. Yeah, but you see everyone in the screen. Five yeah, yeah I, I think I see everyone here. I think we're pretty good. Okay. All right. Aza, we want to see you. <laughs> All right. Just give me one second. All right. Let me take a nice picture here. All right. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. All right. All right. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much. We'll keep in touch. Okay, sure. Absolutely. I am absolutely available to reply to questions and comments by email. Uh, Julius and Fabian have, and also you even have my email address, so you can you can write to me, and even giving me two or three days, I will reply to all the questions possible. Awesome! Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And if in the future you you decide to organize the courses in uh, in African countries, I would also be sometime available if uh, if needed. That would be great. Yeah, we're actually planning on on organizing something for next year, hopefully. So, we'll we'll, we'll let you know. That would be really awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank Take you. Care. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.